Blazers 106-104 yesterday. The Lakers 6 of 33 from three. Russell Westbrook benched for the final three possessions of the game. He missed a 15-foot pull-up with under 30 to go. Had he made it, that would have given the Lakers a key three-point lead. All right, Shannon, break this down. What's the biggest reason the Lakers blew that eight-point lead with four minutes left? Shot selection. The they were terrible shot selection. They took horrible shots. Russ takes a three somehow. It is funny because it's a bad shooting team, and the ball ends up in Russ' hand, wide open three skip. He doesn't even hesitate, shoots it. Patrick Beverly ends up with the ball in his hand. The clock's counting down with a three. He shoots it. He has to get it up. Boom. Yeah. LeBron takes a horrible three, and boom. And so now you take bad shots. They come down there, get good quality shots, and now what should have you could have expanded the lead. You don't run enough. I mean, the Lakers don't run any offense. I mean, I, that was no offense. Somehow Russell shooting the ball from 28 feet. That's part of your offense. Patrick Beverly getting the ball with the clock running down. That's a part of your offense. LeBron taking a horrible three. That's a part of your offense. That's why they lost. They have a horrible shooting team, Skip. The Lakers are shooting 21.2% from three. 25 of 118. The next worst team is shooting 29%. And, and by it, the way, that's the second worst all-time start for a team, second only to the 2018 Atlanta Hawks. Go point ahead. two. In NBA history, there have been over 6,100 instances of a team taking at least 100 threes over a three-game span. The Lakers are shooting the second worst. As you mentioned, the 2018 Hawks shot point two. They're 21.2, I mean 21.0, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and the Lakers are 21.2. Yep. Russ, one for 12 from three. Pat Beverly has 12 fouls, three baskets. None is a minus 44 in 44 minutes. And he's seen his minutes decrease, decrease, decrease to almost non-existent. The Lakers offensive 30th in offensive rating. Hold on. There's only 30 teams in the NBA. That's last. Mm. They're 30th in field goals. Damn. They're 30 teams. Mm. They're last. Mm. 30th in three-point shooting. Damn, they're 30. They're last. Mm. 30th in second chance points. 30th in rebound differential. They're last, last, last. Skip. Got crushed again on the glass. Josh Rushed. Hart has 16 rebounds. Rushed. That. Oh, shit, man. You overreacted. You overreacted. It's preseason. Okay. Mm. Either you can rebound or you can't. Yep. It doesn't matter. Preseason or postseason. Rebounding the basketball is still, you go up and get it. They didn't go up and get it. They still can't shoot. I don't know what the skill. Rob Palenka got a contract extension. I don't know how. He must be got a tape. Mm -hmm. He got a tape. Like the uh, 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 Golden State had a tape on Draymond and somebody leaked it. They, somebody, he got a tape on somebody. Mm. He got a tape with somebody in the GOAT. Because there ain't no way in hell you leave this you team as constructed like it is mm. and you get a contract extension. Ain't no way. Okay. I hear everything you just said, and I'm going to take it, unlike Dak Prescott, up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's 98 to 90 home team. Yes. This is at the crypt against a mediocre Portland team. Yeah. That, that's all they're going to be this year in the West because the West is pretty loaded. They're loaded. Okay, so you're up eight with 442 left. And if we could see what happened, because you're about to give up a 16-6 to six run to the close, and you're going to lose by two points. Yes. Okay, so it starts with a 355. Let's, let's see the shots from outside the paint that the Lakers took. LeBron takes a three, a little long, then... Guess who takes a three, West Brick, and it's way short. And then this with the shot clock running down, Pat yep, Bev. Pat Bev shot clock, nope. And then LeBron, no, nope. way wide left. And then that was the shot of shots, the little 17-footer. And then this is the last to tie by LeBron. Fall away with Dame on him, which was weird. But, but again, you got Dame on you, and you end up with that shot. Okay, now... Those are the, the outside shots. You, you, every time you tried to go inside, you scored. Right. Okay. Now, let's look at one other play defensively, the Jeremy Grant play that gave them the lead. the lead. This is with three seconds left. If we could see what Jeremy Grant did to LeBron and AD. I'm going to throw AD in this also. He goes right around LeBron and goes straight up. And where's your help defense? Again, LeBron gets beaten right around inside and can't make a play on the ball. He, I think he's looking at AD like, can you give me a little bit of help? I, it, it looked like he clutched it. AD thought he was just going to go right up with I, it, and he kind of double. Yeah, he double pumped it. Okay, but but that was a huge defensive blunder for a team that actually has played very good defense. All all told, very good. Skip. 
They didn't turn the ball over that much no. yesterday. They created turnovers. Their defense has been good enough for them to win. Okay. They just can't make any shots. All right. Now let's go to the flashpoint. This is 27.3 seconds left. <laughs> Russ says after the game that he's operating the way he was always taught. You know, he didn't say this, but back to his days in Oklahoma City, you go two for one. Well, Russ, that, that's just you, – you, you have to do it – you, you can't do it in a vacuum. You, you, you have to Thank say, wait a second, where are we now in this game, in this circumstance, in this situation? Thank you. Well, you can't just automatically say it's a two for one. Well, wait a second. You're losing a lead down the stretch. You, you, you need to go ahead and work the clock a little bit because you're up by what are you at one point? 102 to 101, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so you're you're up a point at this point, and that lets you know it's basketball IQ. Okay. Because I want to ensure that we get a last shot. Okay. If you get a great quality shot, you won't need a last shot. And then, to Darvin Ham's credit, he took Russ to task. He was saying that he, he didn't have a problem with the decision. He just said, I just wish we would have attacked the rim directly because he made the point. Nurk is just standing back in the lane with five fouls. Right. So if, if Russ says, Okay, let me see if I can foul him out. Well, then you and I'd say, okay, we'll, we'll grit our teeth and grin and bear it. And, right? and hopefully you make one of the two. Okay, makes one of the two. But if you foul out Nurkic, that, that's a little bit of an advantage. Yes, okay? absolutely. All right. And to Darvin Ham's credit, after the game, he finally said, we don't have time for people, uh, people's feelings, for people to be in their feelings, for one person to be in their feelings about when and where and how they should be in the game. I don't have any time for that. I have expressed myself on this. I don't understand why Darvin Ham went from, we are going to realign, translation, demote Russ. Remember that on that Friday, the Woj yep. bomb dropped on ESPN, and Darvin Ham reinforced it by saying he's going to come off the bench. Remember the last preseason yep. game? He came off the bench. And Russ played five minutes, and he missed two threes, and he had two turnovers. And then all of a sudden, he's walking up the tunnel with a little bit of a limp, and he says, you put me in harm's way because I, I pulled my hamstring. I'm not buying the hamstring pull at all because he didn't miss any time. And then he and Darvin had a sit down, and that's why I said it felt to me like Darvin crumbled. Well, then I heard from inside that, that I, I thought, well, maybe Jeannie and Rob said, you have to start him right. because we're trying to trade him. And I heard from inside, it did not come from above. Darvin just decided, no, I got to keep the first ballot Hall of Famer in my starting lineup because I like his energy. So he didn't come off the bench at Golden State. And you remember what happened at right. Golden State. And then he goes 0 for 11 in game number two. And then yesterday, it surprised me because I thought at 16, well, 98 to 90 with 442 left, I, I wanted him not to go back to Russ. And he did yank him late in the game with what was it like 12.4 seconds left, but it was too late damage by then. Done. The, the damage had been done. He put Austin Reeves in. I just think you have a better chance with Austin Reeves in the lineup than Russ because Austin Reeves doesn't care whether he shoots or not. He's not going to take ill advised shots and he's going to play defense and he's going to make smart basketball plays and he's going to try to get LeBron and whoever else, AD, better shots. In what, their spots. What Russ says is what analytics provide. In that situation, Skip, you got a better chance if you make the shot of winning the ball game. It didn't look. Russ had played, had shot the ball terrible up until that point. Yep. And that's what Russ needs to think. Oh, I was always talking about a two. Russ, that's if you're down. Not when you're up. You don't go fast like that. And I, I saw a clip, and I don't know if they cut it in splice. That when he took that shot, LeBron was like, "They were, they were doing it. No, it wasn't spliced. The, but and AD was, was like, kind of doing it too. They were looking at you like, what? 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 Skip, Whoop. you go two for one if you're down. Yeah, that way because there's time <laughs> you can hold. You know, Skip, and and you go two for one when you can make shots when you're a pretty good shooter yes. or a very good yeah. shooter, right? You haven't made really an outside shot. No. Everything that you've gotten yeah. has been attacking the basket. No but doubt. Somehow you thought pulling up for the 17-footer would be the right choice in that situation, given how poorly you and your entire team has shot the basketball. Okay, I got it. Now, LeBron said after the game that the, the quote was, I feel like this is an interview of trying to set me up to say something. Mm -hmm. I can tell you guys are in the whole Russell Westbrook category right now. And he says, that's not who I am. Right. Okay. I, I got that. But LeBron knows full well 
that he doesn't really need to pile on to Russ. We're going to do that for him because he has become Russell West Brick. And as I always say, the quote unquote goat needs a scapegoat. He's got one with Russ. Whether he, he, he doesn't need to say a word, no. he's going to get scapegoated onto Russ. And much of it, Russ deserves. Okay. I don't want LeBron to get a pass for what happened because I told you last year, I counted 50. I keep close to, I watch every dribble of every game. I thought there were 15 times last year where the Lakers were in position to close a game and win a game that it comes down to LeBron James. Take us home, James. Home, James. And once again yesterday, I realized that he's handicapped by Russ, that that it's the anchor around his <laughs> ankle right now. He has to drag him through these games. I got that. But to me, if you're up eight with 442 left, it's up to LeBron who has the highest IQ in basketball, he's still the best passer in basketball, just to figure out, take it home. 